Good afternoon. In today's Episcopal Church 101, I'd like to start with a quote from, of course, none other than Martin Luther. Although I'm unable to substantiate this quote, I heard it long ago in class, and Luther was undoubtedly criticizing the organizational structure of the Roman Catholic Church, in which he was a priest in the 1500s. <clears throat> it is a good thing to consider not only how any group is organized to make decisions, but how they share their money or not, and what money sharing has to say about power, relative importance, and group values. The quote is that forms have their consequences. Now, consider the scripture from Acts chapter 2. I read this earlier in the meantime, but it's worth pondering today again. Quote, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. How would we describe a collection of different Episcopal churches in a geographic area today? All who believed in that great city attended different local assemblies called parish and mission congregations. As there were enormous disparities in wealth between rich and poor in different neighborhoods in that city, so was the difference in wealth between the local parish and mission congregations. When difficult economic times struck, many of the poor congregations were forced to close the bishop told the faithful members of those missions forced to close that they could just attend one of the wealthier congregations miles away, although there was no public transportation available. That's pretty much what happens today. Sounds grim, doesn't it? There's absolutely nothing biblical about the way in which the Episcopal Church, or for that matter, most denominational churches, handle their money. The model is more based upon the American mythology about the power of the individual, the ideas of ownership, dangerous ideas about who deserves disproportionate wealth, and ideas about political control. Since the model for non-sharing of money in the church sits in absolute harmony with what we see in society at large, few people question the model, its wisdom, or its consequences. What if we eliminated the technical distinctions between a parish and a mission? What if we got rid of the idea of my money when it comes to stewardship, giving, and the management of congregations in a region? What if we tried to implement a more biblical model based as much as possible on the book of Acts? Perhaps the congregations in poorer neighborhoods could be invited to join the wealthier congregations for various festivals. Perhaps a citywide or regional collection of congregations could afford small vans and drivers. Perhaps a diversity of incomes, races, and lifestyles could be visible on Sunday mornings instead of, as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King observed, quote, Sunday morning is the most segregated time in America. Perhaps a sharing arrangement based upon respect and mutuality would result in more people developing glad and generous hearts, sharing our money among all the churches in a region. That might be a good thing. 